Hi, my name is Jake Kinnevin. Today I'm going to be going through a bit of an introduction to VSTO Contrib, an open source library that makes writing VSTO add-ins much easier. First, I just wanted to cover the goals of VSTO Contrib. They are to make it much easier to write and maintain VSTO add-ins. The ability to unit test those add-ins as well, and all the logic in them. Add optional IOC container support. For me, IOC support is really important because I'm very used to working in that way, and it gives you a lot of flexibility. The ability to separate your concerns. I don't want to have a single callback class that has all my application logic in it. I want to be able to separate those things out, introduce services, make my app more composable. All of this adds to the maintainability of your add-in. And finally, make the ribbon, custom task pane, windows and document interaction all cohesive. VSTO makes it kind of difficult to manage all of those sort of things. Each has their own intricacies and you have to take care of a lot of the plumbing. VSTO wants to take all that sort of stuff away. It will let you focus on writing your add-in rather than dealing with the intricacies of Office. There's some terminology we need to cover before we get started. So the first one is the view, or the window. We can have multiple windows for the same document. This is starting to be where it gets a bit more complicated. In Outlook, we have our explorers or inspectors. All of these things are views. In PowerPoint, it will be the window as well. So we'll just call this the view, and that's a generic term we can use across all of the Office applications. Next is the context. So in Word, the context is the document. PowerPoint, it's a slideshow on the current presentation. In Outlook, we've got the mail item, or the task, or the appointment. All of these, these are the context you're working with. So now we've got the view and the context. The next one is the custom task pane. Custom task pane is just a simple pane that docks generally on the right hand side by default, but it can also dock on the left as well. Finally, we've got the ribbon, which you should be familiar with. How do all these things interact? We've got all of these different components. The majority of add-ins will use most of these things. So how do these things actually interact? Well, let's take a very simple example. We've got a single document with a single task pane and a ribbon which, when you click the button, shows and hides the custom task pane. Seems really simple, but you've got completely different lifetimes for these sort of things. The ribbon is created, you create one class that has all of the callbacks for your ribbons, whereas doesn't matter. And that doesn't matter how many documents or windows or anything. There's only a single instance of that class available. Whereas custom task panes are registered per window. So let's take a look at the multiple window scenario. I've now got two windows showing the same document. This means my ribbon callback has one instance of a class, but then I have to make sure I hook into the new window event and then Whenever that happens, register my custom task pane with the next window. Make sure that now this state has to be synced across multiple windows. If What happens if I click Show Panel on this right window? Should it hide on the left window? Generally, that's up to you. VSTO Contrib will take care of that, and it will actually keep it in sync for a context. Let's explore that a little bit further. If I open a second document now. We now have two contexts, but three windows. VSTO will make sure, VSTO Contrib rather, will make sure that if I show and hide the panel for one document, 
it will only show and hide that panel for that document. The other document will be unaffected. So this simplifies the model greatly. You don't have to worry about windows and the different levels. You just have to worry about defining your ribbon, defining your custom task pane, and VSDO Comtrib will take care of the rest. That looks a little bit more complex because we have multiple ribbon types. So in here we've got a mail compose, you've also got mail read, these have different ribbons. We've also got the appointment, contact and task. Each of these have their own ribbons and we want to, if we want to add buttons, we want to add them to a specific ribbon type. We don't want to just add a button to all of them in Outlook. How does VSTO Contrib actually deal with that? VSTO Contrib actually introduces the concept of view models. Now, view models are registered for a particular ribbon type. So, in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, there's a single ribbon type. But in Outlook, we've got a lot of different ribbons. We've got the Mail Read, Mail Compose, Appointment, Task. All of these have different ribbons. What we want to do is define a view model for a ribbon type. VSTO Contrib will then create one view model instance per context. So in the example we had before, we had two windows showing the same document, and then another window showing another document we would have two instances of our view model, one for each document. This Contrib will then call into your view model and say, hey, the active view for this document has changed. So when I'm switching between my windows, it'll be calling back in saying, this is the current window, now this is the current window. And finally, it finds the associated ribbon XML by convention. The convention basically is that it has the same name. You can drop the view model off, or you can drop the model, but the start of it has to be the same as the view model. View models now have lifetimes as well. So we were talking about a single instance for each context. We also will give you a, or create an instance of a view model for a null context. So this is for the scenario that I close all of the windows, all of the documents down, and I'm left with the empty window. I still want to be able to interact with the ribbon, potentially, like, depending on your add-in. The null, by creating a view model that has no context, it allows you to do that. When we close the document or the window, it'll clean up your view model. How do we define them? So we've got a ribbon view model here. This is actually for an Outlook contact. So we give you fully typed support using enums. So I can say, this is an Outlook ribbon view model, and this is the ribbon type. Now that attribute is actually optional for Word and Excel and PowerPoint, because there's only a single ribbon type. But in, in Outlook, it's required. The next thing is the iRibbon view model interface. We'll go through the properties on that. First one is the ribbon UI. That's basically just uh, the interface that allows you to interact with the ribbon. So that allows you to invalidate controls, select tabs, those sort of things. The next one is the VSTO factory. So the VSTO factory allows you to access the VSTO document or um, many other features of VSTO. We give you this because we want you to have the full power of VSTO, but the increased flexibility. After all, this is a contrib to VSTO. We don't want to replace it, we want to augment it. Next is the, the initialized method. When your view model is created, a context will be passed in. This will be either the document, or the spreadsheet, or the appointment, or the mail item. Whatever the current context is, it'll be passed in. 
This is the method that will be called whenever the view changes. It will also be called initially when this view model is created with the current window that uh, this context lives in. And finally we've got the cleanup method. Next thing we want to look at is the Office View Model Base. Now this is an optional helper class. You don't have to inherit from this, but it gives you a few nice features. The first one is Get Picture. That simply just allows you to put in a path to an image and it will return you that image. The next one's Get Picture that returns an iPicture DISP. This is a simple, this is an interface that represents an image for Office. You have, whenever you're passing images to Office, you have to return this interface. It's a bit of a pain to actually get an instance of that, so VSGO gives you some helpers to allow you to convert from images and icons across to that interface. The final thing you'll notice is we actually implement iNotify property changed. What VSDO Contrib does is it actually supports binding properties to ribbon XML callbacks. This is incredibly powerful because using the iNotify property changed and properties, I can bind a checkbox to a property, raise a property notification, and VSDO Contrib will actually invalidate that ribbon control, which will call the, cause the callback to be re-invoked, and then the ribbon will have the ribbon control will have the correct state. So here's, here's an example. I've got a checkbox here. I've got get pressed and on action. Now, both of those are bound to a property. When when this ribbon's initialized. VSTO will, or Office, will call the get pressed callback. Now VSTO will make sure that that gets routed to this property. It's much simpler because we don't need to worry about the method signature and that sort of stuff. It'll just automatically get routed properly. You can also use the standard callbacks that you're used to with uh, the iRibbon control and those sort of things. But this just gives you another option and increased flexibility. The next interface is the iRegister Custom Task Pane interface. It's got a single method on it, which has a single parameter. That parameter is a delegate. What this delegate does is every time you invoke it, it registers a custom task pane. And it actually gives you an iCustom Task Pane wrapper back. Now, this is an abstraction over the custom task panes that allow you to set visibility so, and other things. So if I set the visibility to false, no matter how many windows I have open, it'll automatically set the visibility to false on all of the instances, on all of the custom task panes for all windows for that document. It gives you a really nice, clean model to work with. The parameters of the delegate are control factory, because we need to register our custom task pane with multiple windows, we need to create multiple instances of your user control. This is why you have to pass a, a factory to us, or a funk of user control. Next we just have to pass the title. What that looks like is, in the callback, we invoke the register delegate, we pass it a, a user control, in this example, I'm using the WPF panel host. It's a user control built into VSTO Contrib that allows you to host WPF controls in your custom task pane really easily. and works around a few little issues. And then finally, the title. So that's really, really simple. And then we can save the custom task pane as a field and we can interact with it whenever we want. I encourage you to check out the samples at github.com slash jakeginnevin slash vstocontrib. Samples just have a few sample applications for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. Issues are welcome, so if you find any problems, please raise an issue on GitHub, and I'd love some feedback. Thanks.